Absolute flashbacks of the Luna and UST collapse are lingering through the crypto community right now. Stable coins are supposed to be stable. So why is USDC, the fully backed, one-to-one -one redeemable, publicly audited stable coin, temporarily off of its peg? Should you worry? And how can you take advantage to maybe make some money from all this mayhem? So first off, think of USDC as a digital dollar. Circle is the company that issues them, and for every real dollar that you give Circle, they mint and send you a digital dollar that is backed by the one you gave them. Okay, so we know what stable coins are, we know what USDC is, so let me take you to the beginning of this crazy timeline. And everything traces back to one Silicon Valley bank, a sizable yet under the radar West Coast bank, which was tailored towards startups and companies and held a lot of their cash reserves used to pay employees, uh, like, like payroll, expenses, costs, et cetera, right? It's safe to assume that a lot of companies kept their cash there, or at least some of their cash. And just 24 hours after the collapse of this Silicon Valley bank, there's already a list of about a dozen companies that have publicly came out and said, yep, we have money in that bank. And that is a problem because there's probably hundreds, if not thousands of more companies that are yet to come out in the public and you know, say that they had exposure to this bank. Here's how banks work. So they're not in the business of storing your money safely, right? They're in the business of making money. And how do they do that? With your cash, right? They're gonna act like they're giving you this tremendous favor of storing your hard earned money safely and securely for free, right? but they just want you to save your money so that they can use your money to make more of it. All right, so let's say you deposit $20,000 in a bank, right? You make an account, boom, 20K. What they're gonna do, they're gonna turn around, take $10,000 of that, lend it to somebody, charge them interest, and just like that, they have passive income. Then they're gonna take like 5K of that and use it to buy something like, I don't know, treasury bills, bonds, some type of investment where they think they can make an ROI. And that remaining 5K of your 20 is now your reserves, right? So they'll keep that, right? That's what fractional reserve banking is. They'll keep that reserve in case you want some of your money back. So what happens when you come back a month from now and you want to pull out the entire 20,000? Well, nothing should happen, right? They, they will be able to give you that 20K because they have other customers who also have reserves and they're gonna pull from them. The problem happens, right? The trouble happens when you have 5,000 customers that want all their money back or most of it than 10,000, right? And then word starts getting out that people can't get all their money out and they can only get like half because there's a liquidity crunch. And that's when a bank run happens and everybody rushes to get their money out. At one point, a customer is gonna come up and ask for his money and they're gonna be like, nope, sorry, we don't have it. Like maybe we do, maybe it's liquid, but we don't have it available to give to you, right? It's out being loaned out or in investments and we just can't get it to you. So that's when mayhem starts, right? And usually that's when the FDIC steps in, the bank collapses and that is what happened to Silicon Valley Bank this past Friday, March 10th, 2023. So how did this affect the USDC peg, right? I'm getting there, I promise. So, okay, remember how I said a lot of companies kept a lot of their money or some of their money there? Well, so here's what Circle did. They kept 25% in cash reserves and those cash reserves were spread across six different banks. One of those banks happened to be SVB. And on Friday night, Circle came out and said they had about $3.3 billion inside of this SVB bank that went under, right? Which out of their $43 billion in reserves, it's not a crazy large amount, right? But it's still a sizable chunk. So now what? Well, first of all, that $3 billion is not gone, right? It's recoverable. The question is how quickly? Let's jump into my computer so I can show you guys how this works, right? So right now there is about $43 billion of USDC in circulation. And all of that should be backed one-to-one, -one, right? With real dollars in the real world, and it is. But only $11 billion of that is in cold, hard cash, ready to be you know, paid out or redeemed for, by USDC holders. And three billion of this 11 is tied up in that bank, right? So where is the rest of the money? The rest of the money is in short dated, like one to three month T-bills. So without getting into what those are, essentially these are also liquid and can be sold basically instantly from what I know. So yes, the reserves are actually there. And to prove that every single month, there is a public audit by one of the top accounting and auditing firms in the nation. They, they rotate them out, such as Deloitte, Grant Thornton, et cetera. And they have these reports made public. And let's see if we can find them here on the website. So if we click on 2023, Right now, um, March just started, we're nearly halfway through. So the March report is, the most recent report is the January one, right? And the February one should be, should be coming very, very soon, right? So we know that the reserves are there, it can be back. But the question is how panicked are USDC holders and how quickly, how many people will want to redeem 
USDC for $1. So here's how it works, right? USDC can be used at any time, 24 seven in the crypto DeFi world. However, if you want to redeem it for physical cash, right? You will have to do that through Circle or through Coinbase. And what happened was a lot of people quickly rushed to start redeeming their uh, coins for cash. And on decentralized exchanges, they started selling their USDC for any other stable coin or any other asset like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And that caused a big uh, like imbalance USDC got knocked off its peg, meaning there was much, everybody was trying to get rid of it and not many people were trying to hold on to it, right? So I think the lowest point it hit was 88 cents when it, in reality, it should be equal to $1. And amidst all this chaos on Friday night, Coinbase decided to pause redemptions on the Coinbase app. And they said on Monday, we'll reopen these because banks are closed during the weekends, blah, blah, blah. What they're trying to say is everybody's panicked, right? There's little to no information that is available to you guys. So you're gonna, you know, just be fearful, panic and, just gonna make things worse, right? Whether that's right or wrong, that is up to you to decide, but I think it was probably a good move. So Monday is gonna be a very interesting day and I'll tell you why in a little bit, but first let's go through the three scenarios of how quickly or just in general, how this $3.3 billion hole can be filled or how that money can get um, recovered from the bank. So scenario number one is hopefully what is going to happen. Um, it is the best case scenario. So on Thursday before the actual bank collapse the next day circle actually made a statement that they requested a wire transfer or withdrawal of all their money the silicon valley bank right but couldn't process because literally the next day is when it collapsed and everything went crazy so i did some digging and apparently F the fdic honors requests withdrawal requests that were made prior to them getting involved in the restructuring of the bank so if that is the case then circle might have their full 3.3 billion back by like next week and then the last scenario is a slow repayment. So the FDIC is first gonna pay back people that had less than $250,000 because that's what their insurance covers, right? And everybody else, I believe will get like some dividend payments over time and be made whole on, or almost whole over, you know, I don't know how much time, right? I'm not really sure. One of the founders of Circle made an announcement today with kind of like an update and said, if that were to be the case, then Circle will use its resources such as they have a lot of interest that they earn actually like on a month to month basis. So that plus their assets, worst case scenario, they're gonna raise outside debt to fill that hole of $3.3 billion while they're getting that payment back from the FDIC. All right, so why is Monday going to be an interesting day? Because remember how I said on Friday night, Coinbase paused redemption. So people can't go from USDC back to cash, right? The real dollars. Well, on Monday, Monday morning, that will be reopened. And there is a lot of people in line quietly waiting to redeem their USDC for real dollars because nobody kind of knows, right? There, there's a lot of uncertainty of will this be like, there's a lot of PTSD from the Luna and UST thing. So it's completely normal that a lot of people are gonna want to ditch their USDC for cash until they figure out what's going on, right? Understandable, 100%. So because there is maybe seven or $8 billion of cash reserves that Circle currently has, like cold hard cash, the question is, is more than that going to get requested to be redeemed? The good news is apparently uh, I was made aware that the T-bills that Circle, ha Circle is invested in are very, very liquid and can be literally sold that day on Monday and the cash can be used to repay people. So I don't think there will be a liquidity crisis personally or from just from the information that I've gathered, I think there will be plenty of reserves for anybody that wants to redeem any amount of USDC. And when that starts happening, if that starts happening on Monday, I believe the confidence is gonna be restored and the peg will go back to $1 or very, very close and all should be good. All right, so for those of you watching right in the day, week, uh, following this video, you're probably wondering, how can you take advantage? What should I do? Is there any type of strategies? Well, yeah, there's a couple. Um, my first recommendation is if you have no exposure to USDC, you should probably do nothing, right? Sometimes the best move is no move at all. Uh, but I understand, you know, you probably want to have some fun, make some money. So for those of you that do have USDC exposure, like myself, what you can do is first do nothing and bet that the peg just restores back to a dollar, right? Um, I'm assuming a lot of people are going to do this. Um, what also you can do if you are very scared, you can redeem it, send it to Coinbase, redeem it one to one for US dollars on, on Monday morning or the days following following that. Or you can swap it for another stable coin like USDT if you want to keep your money on chain and continue farming, doing whatever you want to do, right? So those are your options if you have USDC exposure. Uh, if you want to long USDC, right? Meaning make money by betting that the, the peg is going to recover, 
what you can do is just simply buy some USDC, like either convert your ETH or other stable coins or whatever, or take a loan, whatever you got to do to buy USDC at a discount. So if you, if one USDC is currently trading at like 95 cents, right? For every USDC you buy, if it recovers to a dollar, you make five cents on the dollar, right? So you're basically buying a discounted dollar, if that makes sense. If you want to short USDC, if you do want to short it, you can put up some collateral on Aave, then simply borrow USDC, swap it for USDT, and just wait for the peg of USDC to come back, and then repay your loan, keep the profit. And then the last option, I guess a lot of people are trying to long USDC, so the borrow demand for Tether USDT, another stablecoin that is tied to the dollar, is out of this world on Aave, right? Everybody wants to borrow Tether. So as you can see on um, Optimism, the supply APY at the moment is 46% for Tether. Um, on Arbitrum Network, it is 39%. And on Polygon, it is 52%, right? So at the moment, that is actually one of the strategies that I'm doing, depositing some USDT into Aave and earning some free cash. This is super easy to do, and there's not much downside. It's just free money, right? But obviously, this is not going to last. As soon as the peg recovers or gets really very close, um, the arbitrage opportunity is not there anymore, so people are not really going to be borrowing usdt like that um, so it's not something that's going to you know be be around for weeks or months on end so hopefully now you have an understanding of this whole situation should you worry in my opinion no everything has been pretty transparent with circle and their reserves so i'm kind of banking on the fact that they're highly liquid and that the three billion dollar hole will be resolved either by the fdic or by circle themselves as they've committed their resources to doing so and filling that hole if if needed so that's kind of my take on this whole situation. Never a boring day in crypto. There's decades where nothing happens and there's weeks where decades happen. And this is one of those weeks. It's been crazy. I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. I'm hoping that, you know, the month of April at least is just calm. Although we do have staking withdrawals for Ethereum coming up. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't mean to turn this into like a podcast episode or anything, but hopefully you learned something. If you did, um, subscribe, give it a like. And if you have any questions on the current situation, Drop them in the comments and I'll get to those too. Feel free to share the video with your friends or family. I know my friends and family are gonna be asking me a lot 24 seven, if this is the same as Luna, what's going on. So I'm gonna link them to this video. That's why I made it. You guys could do the same. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.